Welcome back aliens, my name is Avin Reddy and let's continue with this series on Python. And in this video, we'll talk about CPU. Oh, hold on, this is a Python series, right? Why we need to know about CPU? In fact, everyone knows about CPU, right? CPU has three parts, CU, MU, and ALU. We have worked with MU till this point because MU basically means memory unit. So we were using variables, we were trying to save, save data, so it was there. Uh, the, the, then we have a unit which is ALU, which is in, in which we have two parts. One is AU, which is arithmetic unit, and the second one is logical unit. Now, when it comes to arithmetic unit, it performs calculations, right? So whatever calculation we have done till now, addition, subtraction, division, multiplication, and binary conversion, of course. Now it's time to talk about logical unit. Now, when you say logical unit, this is something which makes your computer think. Of course, your computer will not think automatically. As a programmer, you do it, right? You let your computer think. So you have to add a code, right? So in real world, when you say you are taking a decision, what it means? So you apply different conditions, right? So example, you know, in, in real life, we go with the flow. So example, we'll do this, we'll do this, we'll do this. And then at certain point, we decide, okay? So either we have to go this way or that way. Example, even after completing your 10th standard, we have to decide which field you want to go for. After completing, your, after completing your graduation, you will decide which company to join, right? So we always take decisions based on certain conditions. Can we do that in programming? So in programming as well, we write statements, right? So we write one statement, second statement, third statement, and then we realize, okay, we have two flows now. Either we have to go this way or we have to go that way. And that's where you have to apply conditions. How will you implement that here? For that, we have a special keyword called as if, right? So we will, we will be using if here. So using if you can actually specify the flow of your execution, either you have to go in this way or that way. I would also recommend you to learn about flow charts. I, I, of course, as a programmer, it's a good to know concept. If you know how flow chart works, it will be helpful for your programming career. So let's understand how this, how this if works. So if you can say we have three statements here, right? So after this three statement, we have two flow now. Either we want to execute this set of statements or I want to execute the other, other set of statements. How will you decide what, the, what statement you want to execute here? Based on some conditions, if this is true, I will execute the first block. If this is false, I will execute the second block. And to implement that, we use if. Now, if you talk about the syntax, this is how it looks like. So we have to use if, right? That's a keyword we have to use. And then we, will, we have to specify either true or false. Now, if you say this is true, then it will execute this statement. So if it is true, only then it will execute this statement, right? So let's say the statement is, I'm right. That's it. I want to print, I'm right. So if it is true, it will print I am right, that's it. Let's run this. And you can see we got the answer which is I am right. If this is false, then it will not execute the particular block. So if this is false, let me just run this code. And you can see it is not executing the block. So that's how your if works. If it is true, then only it will execute the block. But hold on, what is that block? And what is this colon and what is this statement? So thing is, whenever we use if, if is basically a block and in, in Python we call them as a suit where you can write multiple statements. But then how will you mention that this statement belongs to if? Because see, if, if I write one more statement here, I mean just below that if I say print and if I say buy, now what do you think? We are saying false, right? It is false. So will it execute buy or not? If this print statement belongs to if, then it will not execute buy because it is false. If this statement does not belong to if, then it will execute by, right? Let's try this. If I run this code, you can see we got by. But why by? It is saying false, right? It's because this statement does not belong to if. Why? It's because we have to follow certain indentation. How do you specify if the statement, because in if we can have multiple statements, right? So if you want to specify all the statements belongs to if, we need to use some certain indentation. And what is indentation? Some specific spaces. It can be one space, two space, three space, 10 space, or it can be 100 spaces. You have to use certain number of spaces. So if I use four space here, for this one as well, I need to use four space. Even if I use three space, you can see it will give you error. Okay, so it says un, uh, unintended does not match any other international level. So you have to make sure that it belongs to, you either use either one space, so you have to, throughout you have to use one space. If you use two space, throughout you have to use two space, okay? But normally we always use four spaces, okay? Example, if I say, uh, even if I say three spaces for both, then it will work, okay? So there's no error. So you might get a warning by saying, you know, you should be using four, uh, four spaces. So it's better to always use four spaces. In fact, the tab, one tab is four space, right, by default. So I would also prefer to use tab instead of using spaces because you might 
make a mistake with spaces. So use one tab and that's fine. And if you are using an IDE, just say enter by default, it will, it will use the indentation. Okay, I don't want to keep by inside if, so I will write it outside somewhere here, right? So this by doesn't belong to if block. But then question arises, we will not be writing true and false in a code itself, right? This true and false will evaluate from an expression, right? Of course, it is dependent upon user input, it's dependent upon the data in the database, it depends upon the data on the server, it's all dependent upon the value you are passing and the condition. So how will you do it here? Maybe I will try this. To understand this list of an example, let's say I, I want to check if the given number is even or odd. Maybe the input is coming from the user or I will take my own input. Let me take my own input and you can try it with the user input. I will take the number as 3, okay? If the number, so when you say even number, odd number, what it means, if the number gets divided by 2, if the remainder is 0, then it's an even number, right? If the remainder is not 0, which is 1 in this case, it will be odd number. How will I verify that? So what I will do is I will use a variable r and I will save the remainder, which is either 0 or 1. So I will say x mod. Remember the, the symbol which we have used? Mod 2, right? So in R, it is either 0 or it is 1, right? So instead of using false, I want to check if my R is equal to, equal to 0. Because if my R is equal to equal to 0, then it will print even, right? So if my R is equal to, equal to 0, that means that's an even number. Okay, that works. Let's try. I will run this code. Oh, can you see that we got by? You know why, why we got by is because x is 3 and it's an odd number. Let's try with 8. 8 is an even number, right? Let's try this. We, we got the answer which is even and by. So yes, we got even number because that's an even number and we got by because it should be printed anyway. This is how you work with if. So if this is true, okay, this is important. If this is true, then it will print even. If this is false, it will not execute the block. It will not execute the statement inside that if. How about 7? Of course, 7 is an odd number, right? I want to print even if it is even, I want to print odd as well. We are not doing that at this point. Okay, how do I print odd? Because see, if I print odd outside the if block, I will say odd. The thing is, it will print odd anyway. Doesn't matter if your value is even or odd. Example, if I run this code, you can see we got odd in this case. And if, I, if the value is 8, then, only, then also it will print odd. I mean, it is printing even then odd as well. We don't want odd for even numbers, right? So I want to execute this one only when the number is odd, okay? So that means I want to print this only when, so it will say if, if r is equal to equal to one, okay? So we are doing that, right? So we are checking if r is zero, then print even. If r is one, print odd. That works, let's try. Oh, we got even because it's an even number. And I will try with nine, let's say run. Oh, we got odd, so it is working. So eight is even, it, it was working. Nine is odd, it's working. But don't you think if the number is even, okay, everything is working as of now, but we, there's a twist here. See, as a programmer, we also want to improve the performance, right? Uh, it's not just about writing code. It's not just about getting the output. It's about writing the efficient code. And this is not efficient. You know why? Because when you say your number is 8 and 8 is even, we know that. So it will check if R is 0, yes, it will print even, that's right. But then if the number is even, why you have to check this as well? Because it will go in the flow, right? Example, if I, if I debug this application, let me just add a breakpoint here. If you remember, we have done that before. I will say debug and let's try F8. So you can see if I say F8, it is, it is saying, yes, R is zero. It will print, it will print A1. And then I, I don't want to check for odd, right? Because it is even, so, but still it will check R for one as well. I don't want it to check for R is equal to one because it doesn't make any sense. It's an even number. So that means what I'm, what I'm expecting here is if it is checking for this number, if it is checking for even, if it is true, then you should not be checking this one. In that case, what you will do is you, instead of saying R is equal to one, you can say else. You know what else means? If it's true, then execute the block. Otherwise go for the else block. If this is getting executed, it will not be when checking the else condition. Let me just prove my point. I will put a breakpoint here. I will say debug, right leg, debug, and F8 for the flow. You can see R is zero, yes, it's going to even, and now it has skipped the else block. So this is how you improve the performance. So instead of using two if, we can use if and else. It works, right? So these are you, you work with if else. Now, can I only use else? Of course not, else comes with if. So you have to remember that. So you can write if or else instead of writing two ifs. Or there are certain conditions which are different from each other. It's not dependent, so of course you have to use two if there.
Can I have if inside an if? Is it possible? Let's try. After printing even, I also want to check if the number is greater than 5. Right? We can do that. So we can check if x is greater than 5, then I want to print something else. I want to print greater. That's it. I want to print. I want to print great. That's it. I just want to print great. It doesn't make any sense. I know printing great. But then the idea is we can have if inside an if. So this if will be checked only when this is true. Right. So when you say if this is getting if this is true, it will execute even. And then we have like we are getting another if. And see this, see the indentation. So this print great belongs to the second if, not the first if, right? So if this is true, then it will print even, then it will check for the another condition and then it will print great, right? So this is called as nested if, which is if inside the if. Now, how, we, how do you know that this is inside the if? Because of indentation, right? We can have an entire tree of ifs, you know, if inside the if and if, if, if inside the if, that works. For this one also we can write else. Now this else is a pairing with this if, not the above if, okay? And if I say print, I will say not so, good, not so great, right? So what do you think? What is the output now? Of course, great, right? So let me just run this code and you can see, oh, we got an error. Can you guess the error? That's right, you can see that error here, the error symbol. So we should be using a colon, my mistake there. So whenever you use if else, we have to provide a colon. Let's run this code and it works. You can see we got even great and buy. If the value is not greater than five, if it is three, let's run this code and you can see we got odd and buy because this is an odd number. It is not even going there and then it is printing all. So that works. So this is how you work with if and else. Let me add one more twist here. The twist is, in fact, not, the, not with this code. Let me just try one more code here. We also have a concept of if, elif and else. Now what that means? Let's say, let, let's take an example here. If a user enters 1, I want to print O and E, which is 1 in what format? If a user says 2, I want to print 2. If a user says 3, I want to print 3. If a user says 4, I want to print 4. Let's do it here. I will take a random number. I will take uh, 2 because it doesn't matter. Maybe you can take this input from the user. You can try that. I will check if, oh, uh, can, I, can I use round brackets? And the answer is yes. If you want to put the condition, you can put that condition in round brackets as well. Now what happens, you know, if you are coming from other programming language like C, C++, Java, or C Sharp, you have this tendency of using round brackets there. So in Python also, you can use it. It's optional. You want to use it or not, that is your choice. Uh, what I'm talking about is this one. So if I can say if x is equal, equal to one, so instead of putting that, Open, you can also put that in a round bracket. But you know, open looks cool. Let's use that. So we got x is equal, equal to 1. In this case, I will print 1. So that's 1, right? And then we can check it for other, other numbers as well. We can say if s is equal to x is equal, equal to 2. In this case, we'll print. So when, you, when your x is equal to 2, then we can print 2. And we can do that for other, other statements as well. So let's try that for the values. So I will say, so this is how we can do with for, for other, other numbers, right? If I run this code, you can see it just printing two. And if I change the value to, let's say, uh, four, it will print, it will print four. So it is working, right? Everything is working. But again, the same problem, right? What if the value is one? And then when you run this code, don't you think it will print one, of course, but it will checking, it is, it will check for every other number. In that case, if you don't want it to check with every other number, we can use, instead of using if, we can also use l if. Now what does l if means is, if this is not true, then only it will go for the next one. The same thing you can apply everywhere. You can say l if and l if. So l if stands for else if. So if this is false, then only it will check other conditions. If I run this code, you can see we got one. And if I put a breakpoint here, and if I run this code, in fact, uh, we can simply debug it. And let's say F8. And you can see if this is true, it will directly jump outside. Okay, it is not going for further instructions. But if I say this is three, or maybe let's go for two in this case. So if I debug it, let's trace it. So you can see it is going for the first statement. Since it is false, it will jump to LF, right? Because the first one is false. And now this is true because the value is two. It will execute two, okay? And then it will come out. Yeah, so this, this is awesome, you know. Okay, what if the value is five? Now this is not matching with anyone, right? This not, it is not one, it's not two, it's not three, it's not four. So this, see the jumping now. Uh, so if I debug, see the jumping, it's jumping to LF, which is false, jumping to next LF, which is also false, jumping to LF is also false, and then it's, it's come out. So in that case, we should be printing wrong input. But how will I print that? We can do that in else. If none of this matching, we can print wrong 
input. That's awesome, right? So this is how you can work with if, elif, and else. Again, you can try out different combinations. You will find the assignment in, in the, at the end of the video. So try it out and let me know your thoughts on if, elif, and else. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. I, I hope you're enjoying my series. Let me know in the comment section and do click the like button if you're enjoying it. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Bye-bye.